What's going on everybody? I'm Sean Evans and this is Hot Ones. What's going on you guys? My name is Chris and welcome back to Puck Hunt. So what are we doing here today? Maybe my favorite part of this whole video game journey so far is keeping myself organized and well researched to make sure I'm getting the best deals possible. So obviously that means I've been sourcing pricing data from every corner of the internet, plus locally as well. eBay, price charting, checking out your local game stores, these are all great ways to try and determine how much a game is gonna cost and how much you should spend to add something to your collection. So what I'm gonna do here today is share with you the top five most expensive hockey video games. There are a lot of different factors that can impact the value or the cost of a video game. If it's sealed or if it's open, if it's a special edition or the regular version, if it's complete in box with its manual and extra paperwork. The five I've chosen here today remain valuable for a plethora of reasons. Some of them have special edition boxes, some of them are rare, some of them are oddballs, some of them came out at the end of a console's life cycle. There are so many factors at play here. Let's just jump into it with NHL 98. Now this is the only of the main NHL franchise you'll see on this little list. Even just the cartridge remains expensive to this day, let alone finding this thing in its box with its manual. NHL 98 was the last hockey game for both the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, so that makes it a little tougher to find again because they probably didn't release too too many near the end of a console's life cycle. Super Nintendo in particular has gotten extremely expensive because Super Nintendo boxes are made of just cardboard compared to the plastic game boxes of the Sega Genesis. The Genesis ones lasted a little longer over time. They were a little tougher to destroy, but the Sega Genesis ones, I'm sure so many of them got water damaged or lost over time. So that one in particular remains super expensive to this day. Next on the list is Mario Lemieux Hockey for the Sega Genesis. This is another one where the cartridge itself will run you pennies on the dollar. The normal complete in box one, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars depending on where you look. However, this is a special edition one that really commands the big bucks. This one came in a big box with an extra hockey puck inside. So just imagine you're a parent back in the 1990s when this game was released. You keep the puck, you toss the outer cardboard box, and you're left with just the plastic box on the inside with the cartridge in manual and this badass puck. But fast forward to 2021, you are gonna have a hard time trying to find this complete in box with the outer cardboard, inner plastic box, and the hockey puck. I've seen them go from anywhere from $150 to $300 Canadian. If you're sitting on one, I don't, I swear, I'm not gonna just beg about every single one of these expensive games that comes up, but please do let me know if you have that one. I'm also a bit of a big puck collector. Next up on the list is the only pickup here for this video. I am so fortunate and so thankful to be able to add this one to the collection. I've been having a lot of great conversations about my new collection at work with my colleagues. And one of my colleagues said, oh, Chris, I'm sure I've got a game here that you don't have in the collection. He told me he had it, my jaw dropped. I said, okay, sure, yeah, you just leave this on my desk at work one day and I'll, I'll come and thank you. Well, sure enough for the Sega Genesis, he slid over this copy of Mutant League Hockey. This game is a bit of an oddball and I think that's what's driving the value on this one. This game was designed to compete with the NHL 94s and 95s, but really since it wasn't just a pure hockey game, it was really never going to compete and I'm not sure too, too many copies were printed. Now in 2021, this is seen as such a cool collector's item. I mean, just look at the box art again. I believe this game was actually built on the NHL 94's playing engine, which means it actually plays like a pretty darn good hockey game. Not to mention it has all of these additional over the top features. You can kill your opponents, I think, and leave their body parts scattered along the ice. I still don't have a Sega Genesis to play this on, but I can't wait to do so. This one, is missing its manual, but when a copy of this lands on your desk at work and he was so gracious to just donate this to the collection and for the cause, Cody, thank you so much, my man. I owe you one. Next up is another one I absolutely do not have for this collection, 
and it is called NHL Open Ice for the PS1. Now, if this game sounds familiar to you, you may remember it from the dark and dingy arcades of the 1990s where this originated as a full-on arcade cabinet. This was actually the first ever hockey game on the PlayStation 1. Maybe that's why it remains a little rare to this day. Maybe not everyone had migrated over or had dipped a toe in the PS1's waters at this point. In 2021, Open Ice goes for around 75 to 100 Canadian dollars. I really don't have a whole lot else to say as to why I think this game is so rare and so expensive. I think because it's the first, it was an arcade port in a time when the EA Sports franchise was absolutely rolling. It was the powerhouse of hockey video games at the time. Maybe this one got a little bit hidden. Who knows? But if you've got one, consider yourselves lucky. And the single most expensive hockey video game that I've turned up in my research, and this is a lot of research, is on the Nintendo Entertainment System Pro Sport Hockey. Now, some of you may be saying, well, I've never even heard of this game. Well, that probably is adding to its value. This game is in the middle of a perfect storm in terms of factors that contribute to a really expensive hockey video game. This game came out very late on the NES's life cycle, and it also had a sister game, another game of the same name that also came out with graphical improvements on the Super Nintendo. So this game wasn't even as good as the newest shiny one that was released at essentially the same time. Plus the game wasn't really all that good compared to say Ice Hockey and Blades of Steel, which were the big front runners on the NES in terms of hockey games at the time. The end result is a game that not a lot of people bought, not a lot of people knew existed, and if they were gonna buy it, they bought it on the Super Nintendo. So today, cartridge only could run you as much as $200, and complete in box, it ain't my budget. Price charting aside, I've seen people charge $600 for a complete in box copy, $1,000 for a complete in box copy, everywhere in between, and people seem to be snapping them up. These guys must be NES collectors because I don't know a whole lot of hockey collectors that have targeted this game. I don't know a whole lot of hockey collectors besides myself anyway when it comes to video games. This is my golden grail. This is the one I'm saving my pennies to try to get complete in box. I'm still looking for cartridge only, even they don't show up all that often. I'm really excited to add one of these to my collection if and when they show up. I may have to go to a convention or a, a game store or somewhere other than my hometown to find this one. If you have one, again, please get in touch with me. But those, my friends, are the top five most expensive hockey video games according to my research. If you found one that's maybe even more expensive that I haven't talked about, let me know in the comments below. And that's going to do it again here for Puck on Today. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.